Hello, and welcome to our second math lesson. We are going to start today's math lesson with something that is called a number talk, and we will start our following math lessons with number talks also. A number talk is an activity where you're just going to use and share your strategies for solving different kinds of math problems. So the first one that we're going to do today is called target number and we're going to use our skill of addition. In the middle of the target there's a number 28. Below the target there are five numbers. Your task is to figure out all different ways to reach the target number by using the numbers at the bottom. You need to add at least two of the numbers together to get the target number. You might add three numbers, you might add more than three numbers. You can use the same number more than once. So I want you to pause the video and take some time to see how many different ways using the numbers below the target you can get to 28. Did you find some? Here's what I came up with. I found that 21 plus 7 equals 28. 16 plus 7 plus 5 equals 28. 14 plus 14 equals 28 and 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7 equals 28. Maybe you found some of the same ones that I did. Good job. We're going to continue on with our lesson and this is going to be lesson 1-3 in your math journal. It's not lesson one, two, even though this is our second lesson. So sometimes I might not do all the lessons in the math journal now, and I might come back to them later on. So for this lesson, you're going to need your math journal. And from your manipulatives kit, you're going to need your clock, your ruler, your calculator, and also the green pattern block template that was sent home. So pause the video, find those things, and when you come back, restart the video. Okay, now that you're back, we're going to start with a little mental math um, skills. So we're going to talk about how I can use this first fact to help me solve the second fact. Well, I know that 4 plus 4 is 8. Now, how can I use that to help me figure out 4 plus 5 if I didn't know the answer? Well, 4 plus 4 is 8. 4 plus 5 is one more because 5 is one more than 4. So 4 plus four, 5 must be 9. Let's try it again. I've got 6 plus 6. 6 plus 6 is 12. 6 plus 7 is one more than 6 plus 6. So 6 plus 7 must be 13. Here I have 7 plus 7. Well, 7 plus 7 is 14. How can I use that to help me figure out 7 plus 6? Well, 6 is 1 less than 7. So 7 plus 7 is 14. 7 plus 6 must be 1 less. So 7 plus 6 is 13. Here I have 8 plus 8. 8 plus 8 is 16. 8 plus 7. Well, 7 is 1 less than the 8. So 8 plus 7 must be 1 less than 16. It's 15. Here's 5 plus 5. 5 plus 5 is 10. How can I use that to figure out 5 plus 7? Well, 7 is 2 more than 5. So if 5 plus 5 is 10, 5 plus 7 must be 10 plus 2 more. It has to be 12. 6 plus 6, as we know from before, is 12. Well, how can I use that to help me figure out 6 plus 8? Well, 8 is 2 more than 6. So if 6 plus 6 is 12, 6 plus 8 must be 2 more. It has to be 14. Good job. So we're going to talk about toolkits. Everyone who has a job and going to school is your job you need to sometimes use tools in order to do your job well. A carpenter must use hammer and nails and wood to be able to build things. A doctor needs a stethoscope, maybe a scalpel if they're going to do surgery, a thermometer to take their patient's temperature. 
a um, teacher needs a computer, needs whiteboard markers, needs pencils and paper and pens in order to do their job. And third graders need tools too. So the tools that you're going to be using today to help you do your job are going to be the ruler, the clock, the calculator, and the pattern block template. So we're going to start with the ruler. Now on the page where you go for my classroom for math, you're going to go back there in just a second and there's a video that looks just like this. Okay, it's on a computer in the front row of desk in that classroom. So I would like you to take the time, watch this video, and then come back to this page. See you in a bit. Now that you're back from watching the video, get that ruler. It's a little bitty one. It's just a six inch ruler. And I know the video said to line up your ruler to the edge of the line that you're going to be measuring or the object that you're going to be measuring. And they said, put the zero here. Okay. Well, some rulers might not have a zero. Some rulers might have just the line at the end of the ruler. So whether it's a zero or whether it is a line, you're going to put the beginning of your ruler here at the beginning of the line. Then you're going to lay it underneath. And what I want you to be able to tell me is about how many inches long these lines are. So this first one, it's not going to land right above one of the inch mark numbers. It's going to be closer to one than the other. So it's going to be closer to five. So this one, this first line would be about five inches. Now the second line, when you measure it, so go ahead and put your ruler underneath that second line. It's going to be right in the middle of two numbers. So this second line is going to be about two and one half inches. And then measure this last line. It's going to be right exactly at an inch mark. So this last line is going to be exactly one inch long. Now you see where I abbreviated IN? That means inch. So you could either write it out I-N-C-H-E-S or you could write out inches as I-N period. It's your choice. Go ahead and put the ruler to the side. We're going to need it in a little bit. And get out your clock that's in your toolkit. You can manipulate your clock to make it look the same time as in number one, which, what is that time? How do we tell the time on a clock? Well, a clock has two hands. It has a short hand and it has a longer hand. The short hand is called the hour hand and the longer hand is called the minute hand. Now, here's how I like to tell boys and girls how to figure out what the hour is. So here's your hour hand. If I could just extend that line a little bit, well, I'm going to see that that goes right between the 8 and the 9. The hour hand on a clock moves clockwise. It moves in this direction, okay? So that means this is between the 8 and the 9, and it's really closer. It's just past the 8. So whatever hour number it's past, that's the hour on the clock, so 8. So it's 8-something. Behind the hour number, you put a colon. That separates the hours from the minutes. Now we have to figure out how many minutes it is. Now all these little tick lines here, boom, 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 these little bitty guys, those are all minutes. So I could count each one of those one at a time. That would take me a while. Or I also know that the longer tick lines here behind the numbers, each time I come to one of those longer tick lines, it's five. So I can count each one of the numbers by five because they each represent, well, the number doesn't represent five minutes, but the tick line behind it does. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So this clock is showing me 830. Let's go on to number two, and you can show this again on your clock. Here's the hour hand. It's between the two and the three, and it's past the two, so it's two something. Oh, and by the way, this is page five, I believe, in your math journal. I forgot to tell you that earlier. Hopefully you found it. 
And here is the minute hand. It's way over here at this tick line. So we can count our tick lines by five. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So the time on the second clock is 2.45. Here at 6.10, they want you to put in the hour hands to show 6.10 and the minute hand, not just the hour hand. So the hour is six, that's gonna be your shorter line. Sorry, mine's a little crooked. And 10, we want it at 10 minutes after six. So look at our tick lines, there's five, 10. So then we want that minute hand to be pointing at that two. Good job. Get out that ruler again. And what I want you to do is measure this line segment with your ruler and we're going to use the inch side and this is going to be an about so it might not be exactly above an inch number you're going to write down the number that it is closest to do that now and then for number five you're going to use the other side of the ruler and that's centimeters and you can see that the numbers are closer together on the centimeter side of the ruler because centimeters are smaller than inches. So just lay your ruler down, start at the line or zero, and trace the top of that ruler until you get to 10. And then you will have drawn a line that is 10 centimeters long. All right, get your calculator out. We're just going to practice using the calculator, how it works, what it looks like. So when you open up your calculator, I want you to find the button that has C, E, slash C on it. That's to clear it. Tap that button a couple times because we want to get all the numbers out of there. So we're going to work on changing numbers. So I want you to go ahead and type in 50, 5, 0, just tap it. And we're going to change that to 107. So I'm going from 50 to 107. Well, I'm making it bigger, so I need to add. So after you've typed in 50, push the plus button and add 57. So tap 57 and then equals. And you should get 107. So what keys did we press to make that change? We hit the plus sign and we added 57. So go ahead and clear it, clear it, clear it. And then tap in 94. And we're going to change that to 30. Well, we're going from a big number to a small number, so we're going to hit that subtraction sign, and we're going to subtract 64. So tap 64, and you should get 30. So what did we do? We used the minus sign, and we subtracted 64 to get to 30. The last thing that we're going to do today, the last tool is going to be your pattern block template. It's that green one. So what you need to do is just trace any two polygons that have exactly four sides and you can trace them in this space right here. Then what are polygons that have four sides called? It says to use your student reference book but we don't need to do that because those shapes should be labeled on your template. But let's think about that. Polygons, what are they that are four sides? Well it could be a square, could be a rectangle, could be a trapezoid, could be lots of different things that have four sides. All right, good job. We'll talk to you again at our next lesson. Bye-bye.